Hey guys, welcome once again to the Guy Blog Podcast. As always, your host Orlando. And today we're going to be talking money in the bank results. So money in the bank is becoming one of the most significant pay-per-views on the WWE schedule. For the simple reason that money in the bank basically is a not just a guaranteed title shot, but the money in the bank briefcase in itself is treated as as a title, basically, just because of the fact that historically, if you have a money in the bank briefcase, you are almost 100% guaranteed to win the title. Now, has this been the case always? No, but it has been the case enough times to see this as a very significant achievement and the case to be a very significant benefit and advantage because of the fact that you can call for your title shot not only on any given night but at any given moment so if a champion has been through a brutal match you can come in and take him out after he's already been depleted very interesting i love it The fact that Money in the Bank this year has also decided to feature its first time women's Money in the Bank ladder match is great. Forget women's revolution. Forget all of these achievements that they want to call out. It's just about them being treated equally. And the fact that they can show off that they can also have a good to great Money in the Bank ladder match. That's that's fine by me. Especially when you have Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch versus Tamina versus Carmella versus Natalia. I mean, just with Charlotte, Becky, and Natalia, you have three of the best workers in the entire women division and basically in all of WWE, men or women. Tamina still still learning, still ha- having to speed up, but she just came back from an injury. And Carmella, who's improving week by week by week. So... This match was very promising. I found it very entertaining. It was a good match. It wasn't the best match in the world. But for the first time, and you know, women don't do a lot of these ladder matches. I found there were a lot of good spots. It was a good match. And overall, it was entertaining. And that's all you can ask for. Especially when it's opening up the card. It's setting up the tone. But it can't be, you know, the be-all, end-all for the night. Now, of course, they should try to steal the match of the night. But regardless, they did a great job seeing as this was basically the first time you have five women in a ladder match in a Money in the Bank. The ending, some people didn't like it. I say it's a good ending, actually. Because despite the fact that it is the first women's Money in the Bank... Having an ending like that adds to the storyline, adds to the entertainment aspect of the WWE and of SmackDown and of the division. So, yeah, for fairness sake, you would have wished for something else. For it being the first one, you might have wanted something, you know, a woman to definitively gone up there and picked up that case. But from an entertainment standpoint and from a storyline standpoint, first of all, I would have had Carmella win regardless. She's the one that benefits the most and that really needs that briefcase. Charlotte doesn't need it. Natalia doesn't need it. Becky doesn't need it. They can all get title shots. Well, Becky and and Charlotte can. At almost any point, you can set them up for a title shot really easily. Carmella's the one that that needs that little extra push um, to determine whether she deserves a title shot. And you t- in the you know it might be a question in the heads of many fans. Give her this briefcase. That question goes out the door because it's no longer about deserving it. She has a briefcase that just guarantees it. It's perfect. She's the one that that benefits the most from having it, and the storyline of the division benefits the most from having a heel Carmella, having this briefcase, taunting championship matches, taunting other competitors that. Whether they beat her, whether they win, lose, or draw, no matter what they do, she is still guaranteed a championship match whenever she wants it. So, I like it. I like it. You know, the fact that they did what they did with Ellsworth, being the one to drop that case. No, I mean, 
it's funny, but it's also good. It's good for storyline, and, and they're already going to use it because it's the first thing that Daniel Bryan is going to talk about this Tuesday. So great job, WWE. Great do- job to the SmackDown team. They, they really always come up with these little twists that people put out there, but usually on Raw, they'll never take those risks. Glad to see that SmackDown does. Good match. Um, moving on, Usos versus The New Day. I like this match. It was a great match. It was a little blocky, but these are two teams that don't have a history of, of going up against each other, so despite the fact that they're both great, sometimes you have to build the chemistry. On the mic, obviously they have it. Um, in the ring, they're still working on it. But everybody said it was too soon for the New Day to just come in and win the titles. I agree. Um, the Usos need the titles more than the New Day. I agree. And, you know, you can't have this Raw team just come in and beat the SmackDown champions because it'll make the division, the entire division, look like less than. I agree. To that end, the ending of this match, I liked. You could have done it a million ways. They could have gotten disqualified. They could have done a lot of things where they would have retained the title. But after hitting spot after spot after spot, switching momentum between one team and the other, who's going to get that final, you know, one, two, three? And in my head, I thought, oh, my God, the New Day's going to win it. And then, oh, my God, Usos might have won it. And then back, oh, it looks like it's going to be the New Day. And then nothing that the New Day is doing is going to work. So it looks like like the Usos are definitely going to win it. And going back and forth in that was good because it kept you guessing. And it took out of my head the possibility of them getting disqualified or anything else happening. Because I was like, they're just trading, you know, wh- who's going to win? And I really, really like that. It, it was really interesting. And, you know, when a match gets you in there and when the ending happens, it's something unexpected that you weren't thinking about. The match then did a good job. If they, you know, and the fact that the Usos just said, like, that's is it. We're trading back and forth too much. We're tired. We're not going to keep doing this. This is more risk than, than what we need. We've hit them with with everything we've got. Let's just screw this. We're just going to leave and keep our titles. I mean, that was great. That was great. And, you know, it's great because it's a cowardly act. Not only did they not get disqualified, they just decided we're just going to walk away and get counted out. You know, it's like, oh, why didn't you keep fighting? Oh, why didn't you just give it your all? Well, they're heels. They don't have to do any, anything like that. They decided to pull the ultimate heel move, which is, I'm just gonna, we're just going to walk away, boo. We're going to keep our titles. You can keep your effort. You can keep your applause. You can keep your new day. You can keep your t-shirts. You can keep your unicorn horns. You keep all of that. We're going to walk away with our titles. We'll even give you a victory. There you go. You won. Be happy. Clap, clap, clap. We out of here. Loved it. Loved it. It was... It was great because it was so unexpected and it was like a letdown. Yes, it's a mood killer. But, you know, having the heels decide to kill the mood is great. Having the heels decide to, we're just going to shut down the momentum of this match. We're leaving. We're out. Screw this. You guys are not risking your titles. We are. You fans ain't going to pay our bills. I thought you are. We are. As long as we're champions, we're the number one dogs. We're going to keep our our ish or day one-ish, and just get the heck out of here and fight another day. I mean, it was a great, great move and a great way to keep heels with the titles so they're not risking losing to the New Day, at the same time keeping the New Day very, very strong. I mean, I don't know. um, People might complain, but I I feel like it was a good match. It was a great match. Um, The ending was great for the people that did it, meaning the Usos being heels. And it's a great, you know, the card is building. So that I liked a lot. Um, Moving on, next match, we have Naomi versus Lana. And despite the fact that nobody expected this match and expectations were low for this match, I found it to be an entertaining match. Was it the greatest match in the world? No, it wasn't. Was it the best match that it could be? Eh, I mean, 
it, this is Lana's first match. So people have to go into it with that expectation. With, you know, you got to grade it on a curve. Naomi can only do so much. Lana was very good for it being her first legit on TV, on pay-per-view match. She did a lot of things right. She could, she has a lot to, a good base to build on. She looked better than Eva Marie ever looked. And that's not to kick Eva Marie while she's down. That's to say, you know, we've had worse women wrestlers being put in this position who are a lot less deserving and who are a lot less ready to put on a show. Lana did a good job. She looked well. Um, could she be better? I think with time, she will continue to improve. But her base is strong. She started better than a lot of other women would have. And versus Naomi, who's no pushover, who's a great athlete, who you have to keep up with, she did a great job. I have nothing to complain about. So there might be, be people that say, oh, this was a horrible match. Should, never should have happened. I'm like, you know what? You're building this new character, and most characters you can start, you know, as almost a job or start from the bottom. Or you could put her in the title picture right away, see what her reaction is, and then put her back to the middle of the pack and work from there. That's what they decided to do with Lana. I like it. You know, the only thing I didn't like was that she did her finisher, and Naomi kicked out of it, like, decisively. So it wasn't even close. Because it, it kind of kills the mood a bit for her finisher. Unless she has another one in her back pocket. I like that Naomi won with a submission. A very good looking submission. Because it just changes the pace of, of what she does. And keeps everybody guessing you know, how she can end a match. She can end it in so many ways. So I like that. There was a good bit of psychology with her legs being... Like, I like this match. You know, it's not going to be my favorite women's match of all time. But I'm not going to kill it like some people have and just say, oh, it's a horrible match. It never should have happened. Mm, no. Now, after this match, one of my favorite moments of the night happened. Mike and Maria Canellis have arrived. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All the way around. And the way they came out, basically, they're looking like a motivational speaking couple. You know, they're going to... Show everybody the power of love and, you know, almost sounded like they were going to say the power of positivity, but they got to go another way. But showing themselves very, very much in love. Um, Maria Canellas right away establishing herself at, as one of the top women on the brand, saying the first lady is here, you know, and already setting themselves up as people that believe that they are above the fold, you know, and above everybody else with, you know, we are here to educate everyone on SmackDown Live. So that, that I like the tone that they set. Uh, they have good music for them. Um, it does sound like the kingdom is here. And it's, it's just, I like it. They showed to be very much in love, but they also showed themselves to be very arrogant Maria Canella showed that she definitely has skills on the mic. So, no complaints. This is how you show up. You know, and the fact that they decided to take Mike Bennett and have him take her last name, I think it's even better. Because if you want them to be this power couple, first of all, they should have the same last name. In WWE, in the WWE Universe... Maria Canellis is the name. Canellis is the name that matters. So if she comes out as Maria Bennett, eh, it's better for her to keep her name. And he took hers. Plus, that sets up the storyline and establishes her as, between the two, the most dominant one. Um, the Alpha, which is also great. So, SmackDown, applause all around. Take a lap. Great job presenting this couple for the first time to the WWE Universe while at the same time giving them the credibility that Maria Canellis is already part of this universe and she's just coming back and brought somebody with her. So, great. Love it. I can't complain. Um, next, let's talk Jinder Mahal 
the modern day Maharaja versus Randy, do I feel like wrestling today? Orton. So I have to say it like that because Randy Orton is one of the best talents around, but he's one of the least motivated talents around. Now, they got everybody that they could, Greg Gagne, Larry Hennig, Sergeant Slaughter, and, you know, Cowboy Bob Orton, Ric Flair, to be there to see Randy Orton finally achieve his, what, 15 title reigns? Whatever. Point is, um, all of them being there was basically letting you know Orton ain't winning. <laughs> He's not winning this. One way or another, he's not going to win. So, basically what happened, back and forth match, very interesting, but Orton didn't win. Um, I do have to say that Jinder Mahal, his finisher, is looking better each time he does it. The higher he gets the guy, the better it looks. He's doing a good job with it, and and, and that I give Randy Orton credit too in helping to sell that move. Great job, but honestly... It's the right move. Orton as champion is boring. Jinder is not the best wrestler, but he's different and he makes things interesting. So no complaints from me there. Keep the modern day Maharaja as the champion. It sets up a lot more. It gives the WWE staff a lot more options as far as where to take him from here. So no complaints. He could keep that title all the way to SummerSlam. And even beyond if they don't have a better plan. So, I'm happy. They told a great story. It was a very good match. Especially by gender standards. But overall, it was a good match. And uh, no complaints. No complaints at all. Um, A match that I was so-so with was actually Love the Vignette by Brizango. You know, Fashion Vice. Great. Still loving their vignettes. Putting them against The Ascension. Did not love as much. It's, uh... The Ascension needs to do something. I don't know what they need to do. Maybe go back down to NXT. Reestablish themselves. Become better on the mic. Do something for their characters. Because two pissed off guys in costume is not working. You need more depth. They need more than that. So, hopefully they'll figure it out. But, this match was okay. Um, but... It says a lot about the Ascension that Breezango beating them doesn't really give Breezango anything. If they had lost, that would have been horrible. But that's about it. They won, so everything is is okay in the world. And uh, I don't know. Breezango needs to figure this shit out. I mean, not Breezango. The Ascension needs to figure their shit out because, ugh, boy, are they boring. Now, the main event, the men's money in the bank ladder match. With Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Baron Corbin. Keep in mind what I said about the women's money in the bank. This match, with what it carries, it carries a very significant benefit of giving a bump to somebody. And putting them in that title picture, even if people think they don't deserve it, they can at least understand it and accept it if they have this briefcase. Saying that, this match was everything that was promised. It was an amazing match. I loved it. I would tell you, go back and watch it. It's everything you would expect with having the best workers. Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, who are always amazing. Kevin Owens, always amazing. AJ Styles, another level. Triple A talent, Shinsuke Nakamura. And then the one guy in the match that you would have... There are two people that you would have a little bit of trouble putting into the title picture. That's Sami Zayn, because he's a lovable loser. And Baron Corbin, because he's viewed as a mid-tier, maybe top mid-tier talent, but not there yet. So basically, these are the two guys that would benefit the most from winning winning the money in the bank. And having said that, Baron Corbin winning was exactly the right move. Sami Zayn can reel off victories and be believable versus anybody. He can put on great match after great match after great match. And he has one of the best talents that a wrestler could ever ask for, which is he can lose and still have all 100% of the credibility from the crowd that he can win any match, no matter how much he loses. He could lose a million times. 
people are still going to be interested in his matches. They're still going to be great. And they're always going to believe that Sami Zayn can win. Baron Corbin, on the other hand, if he loses too much, his stock will drop. He's not that great of a wrestler yet. But personally, I've been impressed and I've liked his style. So my thoughts are him getting this at this time gives him a year to build. And yeah, he's totally believable as somebody that would take advantage of, you know, any opportunity to cash in and get a title. And he would be believable that he would be able to put in the final final touch to destroy a champion and win. So I like it. This was the right move. Baron Corbin can be a future champion. Baron Corbin, I believe, has a very, very bright future. I've said it before. And him winning this, you know, money in the bank gives him that opportunity to be right up there with the rest of of, of the main eventers on SmackDown. So great move again. Love it. Storytelling wise, love it. Right person, right time. Even if it seems like, oh, he, maybe he needs another year. Exactly. But with money in the bank, now you believe him now. I, I, it's it's to me it's a win win all the way around. So overall, I liked Money in the Bank. If you guys, I don't do surveys yet. So, but I I follow Solomon Monster and he always does a survey. I did not look at the results this morning for his survey, but and I am recording next morning. I couldn't do it last night, but I can tell you that personally, I had this as a thumbs up show. Some people thought that there was only one good match, which was the last one. I disagree. Um, This was a great match. I don't really care um, that some people might not have liked it. I was very much a fan of it. So let's. I'm even gonna let's look it up right now and let's see where people are at with um, Solid Monsters. Oof! Wow. So it was 49 percent thumbs up. 51% 51% thumbs down with 2,200 votes. This is from Solomonster, Monster, who has one of the best fan bases. And if you don't listen to his podcast, you should. Um, but honestly, I disagree. This should have been 70-30. At the very worst, 60-40. This was a very, very good show. Not the most memorable show in history. But still, regardless, it's a good, good show. Um, so I disagree on that. But hey... People feel how they're going to feel, you know. Um, Overall, I thought it was a good show, a very good show, not just a good show. And it entertained. That's all you can ask for. As always, I'm Orlando. Email me, Orlando at theguyblog.com. Find The Guy Blog on Twitter, on Instagram at The Guy Blog. And as always, we're here. We're going to talk. We're going to have fun. So reach out. Send me any questions, anything Tell me your opinion. Maybe you thought it was a horrible show. Tell me why. And uh, as always, take care, guys, and talk to you soon.